Hello, YouTube friends. Gail's here to play another Nana Rena 2024 game. This one is called Deep Breaths. Uh, I believe it's like an underwater horror type of game. Sounds interesting. Uh, there is one female in love interest. So, a little bit of girl on girl here. Which, even though I'm straight, I'm cool with playing those games. I mean, obviously I write girl-on-girl -girl scenarios sometimes, so, so obviously I like to play the games too, if they sound interesting enough to me anyway. Alright. Love is love, people. Alright, let's start. I really like the look of this, which is what really attracted- like, I'm not huge into horror, I mean- as long as it's not too graphic, which hopefully this isn't, but I didn't I didn't see any gore warnings. So so I, I should be okay with it. But um I really like the look of it though. That's why I really wanted to play this one, because I just thought it looked cool and it and it does already. Alright. Uh it looks very uh unique and I'm into it. Alright, it's dark. I can't feel anything. Not my body, not my hands, not my eyes. It's as if an oppressive silence gathered itself to rest atop my chest. I can't breathe. I don't know how long I stay like that, motionless in darkness, but an alarm eventually cuts through my paralysis. Slowly, as if coming back from somewhere else entirely, I gain control of my body and my eyes open. I mean, just look at it. It's so detailed and cool. The lights are blaring, an alarm is sounding off. Errors are flashing across all the screens. Uh, what happened? Um, okay. Survey the scene or check out your suit? Let's check out our suit. The stru structural integrity of my suit remains intact, despite the pounding in my head. Had I fallen down? Uh, I need to stop the alarm. I take a moment to check out the systems more closely. I, I don't know if that's us talking or another character. I mean, I did glance through the page, but I didn't, like, pay attention to the names. Let me check it real quick, just to be... Yeah, yeah, that's us. Okay, that's us. So that's us talking. Okay. Uh, oxygen is yellow. Outer shell still holds green. And the system... The system is down. The alarms operate manually, so shutting them off is easy enough. But just because it's gone quiet doesn't make for any peace of mind. Something happened. I just can't remember what. The terminals on these vessels operate manually as well, disconnected from the main power source to help retain any valuable data from a surge. Very cool. I may not know what's going on, but I'm sure everything that matters has been documented. There's a password blocking the first couple of logs, but it's simple to overcome. I remember setting these myself early on in our mission. Calest 17. Okay. The name of our ship in operation. The terminal opens up to two available logs. The rest have, a, have another layer of encryption. Oh. Oh. I'm guessing it's... Oh. Uh, mission statement. Three manned operation for mineral drilling at 317 leagues. Vessel is the Kales 17, a two compartment ship, life pods, that are separated to allow minimal contact with other workers and increase productivity and deliverables. Access to compartments requires a brief walk on the ocean floor and is only an option under extreme circumstances. Plus 17 consists of researcher 86127, uh, call sign Cryptus, 
Cryptus. Sorry if I'm saying the names wrong. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Researcher 86154, call sign Sila, and Researcher 43029, call sign Bracket. Names have not been disclosed to allow further efficiency. All hail from Leviathan X. Okay. Oh. I recognize my call sign immediately, even before my own name. That's right, I'm a head researcher at Leviathan X Station. This was a routine mining operation. Oh, so did they, like, lose their memory, I guess? In that case, what went wrong? The Coles 17 is equipped with an external escape system that requires a two-man authentication in order to prevent sabotage. Vessel pilots, one within each of the two compartments, must activate the system at the same time to allow access to the escape pods. One pod, once pods are active, it will cause decompression within the vessel and lead to an implosion to prevent any sensitive data from being exposed. In a situation where these pods are inaccessible, a distress signal will be expelled from the vessel to notify nearby authorities. Okay. Alright. The lock system. Uh, stepping away from the terminal, I take a glance around the compartment and immediately find the escape pod two-man lock. There's some damage around it, as if someone was trying to strong-arm their way into activating. It doesn't matter now. With the power supply basically shot, there's no way to trigger it. I need to get in contact with the rest of the team. Maybe someone has a sense of what's going on. I go fishing for the radio and give it a brief try. Nothing. At first. The system shut down must have tripped the breaker on my door, but our comms operate on two frequencies, local and global. Please, I need this to work. Uh, let's investigate local comms. I investigate the ship's local comm frequency. There. A small buzzing noise, just barely audible. Thank God. It's not much to go on, but I have to try. The radio takes time to fix. I don't know how long I fiddle with cross-hatching wires on the back of the console. Minutes, maybe even hours. Eventually, static crackles to life, I breathe. Then I flip a switch and hit push to talk. This is Researcher Crybidus. I repeat, this is Researcher Crybidus. I'm trapped in life pod one, but I'm alive. If you can hear me, please respond. I repeat, if you can hear me, please respond. Over. I sit back and rub my head. The pounding won't subside. One thing at a time. I sit forward, my heart racing in my chest. I know what I heard. Someone is trying to reach me. Hello? Bracket, Sil Sila, is that you? Bracket, Sila, come in, over. Waiting is an agony of its own. What happened? He what's happened here? I have to know. Cryptus. Ooh, voice. Cool. That voice. It's Sila. Uh, oh. <clears throat> I can hear you, over. Sila, the second pilot of our ship. Gruff but sturdy, no nonsense, reliable in a pinch. A surge of pain floods my head when I try to recall anything of substance. Sila, can you give me a sit, sit rep? <laughs> Isn't that what you do, boss lady? Oh, so it's only partially. Okay. Tell everyone how to do their jobs and... Fuck. <laughs> Report back to corporate? She sounds not good. You're hurt. Shit, am I? Who would have fucking thought? I gulp back a mouthful of saliva. There's a strange taste at the back of my throat, but I ignore it for now. At least it's not blood. I was a good researcher, Crybdis. High marks every time. Don't let anyone say otherwise, okay? I don't understand. All systems are down. Whatever happened here, I'm trapped in my pod. Can you please check your... <sighs> are you kidding me? Whatever happened? I fidget in my seat. 
Why is she speaking to me like I'm not her mission superior? I understand some head researchers chose choose to run their station like we're all equals down here. I do not. I take a moment to compose myself. As head researcher of Calcite 17 mission, I am prepared to take full responsibility for our failure so when we reach the surface. But first, I need your help. I can't make amends if we can't get out of here. <laughs> the laugh that bounces down the line at me is a harsh one. Animal. Her bitterness oozes from the radio speaker like battery acid. Fuck you, Grip Dice. Over and out. Well, at least I know how to, how to say the name, anyway. <laughs> anyway, the sudden sound of silence makes me scramble for the talk button. Sila, Researcher Sila, come in. Sila, Damn it. Sila was always cold, but we've been stationed together for nearly a year. At this point, I thought we were past petty squabbles. But hearing her voice now, it's as if we're back to square one. Her anger, her pain, she knows something about what's happening to us. Damn it. Uh, let's try to find Bracket. Bracket? I call over the comm- I call over the comms over and over, but he doesn't answer. All I hear back is the shallow breathing of Sila once in a while. Damn it. Alright, let's return to the locks. I need to recall what happened. If I could put those pieces together, I might be able to get us out of this mess. Maybe there's something more I could get from the logs. The file is called System Routine Maintenance Test. The call site 17 crew has been relatively on top of system review. Better safe than sorry, it came, became a point of mockery between Sila and I. What did she call it? Something we always strive for? Something we always strive for. Hmm. Guessing that's a clue. Oh, okay. Alright. So. Uh, log system routine maintenance test. Call S17 is functional and ready for deployment. The outer shell is still holding towards compression ranges, despite some wear in its structural integrity. The oxygen levels are consistent. Its power supply in a little, is a little on the low end, but should survive the course of the next six-month excursion before a recharge. Call site, uh, call S17 is cleared. Seems routine. Wait. The dates. This entry is nearly seven months old. Shit. When was the last time we did any systems check? That seems so unlike me, as if something compelled me to ignore protocol. I need to confirm this with someone. The radio crackles for a moment, and Silo's shallow breathing fills my compartment once more. There's a slight wheeze to it now, as if she's conscious or her, of her breathing. My memory is shot, Sila. I think I'm suffering from some early stages of trench narcosis. I need your help. <sighs> trench narcosis? Is that what we're calling it now? Just a small lapse in judgment. I don't understand what she's alluding to, but I push forward. I need to convince her to help me. What do I do? Uh, talk about working together, I guess. I don't know what you're referencing, but it's useless to us now. If we want to survive this horror of malfunctioning errors, then we need to work together. Think you can do that for me? I suppose I could, if you ask nicely. Something about the head researcher groveling to me just puts me in good spirits. Uh, sure. Are you serious? <laughs> Another dry laugh, less ironic now and more on the giddy side. Fine. Let's hear it. Please, oh please, Sila, won't you help me? Huh? Oh, almost there. Without you, I'd be lost. You're my only hope. There it is. Now that's out of the way, what do we do next? We find a way to get the fuck out of here. Now that she seems somewhat reasonable, maybe I can find some clarity. I've been accessing the logs in my terminal, but they're all encrypt. My memory isn't as reliable as usual, so I've been working through them. <sighs> 
We were always private about your logs. Think only Brackett had access to them. The next one seems to be about the symptoms I'm experiencing right now. Would be useful to review. How are you holding up? Ugh. Fine, Cryptus. She's cold again. You don't sound fine. <sighs> Leave it. Won't do us any good going back and forth. She's right, I know it. But there's something about the shakiness of her voice, the quietness I was unfamiliar with hearing from her. It settles uneasily. For a moment, I try to picture her in the compartment. Her suit is probably on the floor. She was always messy like that. Hunched over by the consoles, listening to my voice barely filter through the radio. I push from the feeling bubbling in my chest. Try narcosis. What? The password for the next one, right? Try narcosis. You are always practical to a boring fault. Could you help without insulting me? Silence, but I could hear her almost shrug. I head back to the terminal and open up the logs. I make a quick work typing the password and am immediately greeted by the unlocked unlo log. Before I get a chance to read it, I hear crackling from my radio. Sila? No answer from her. Instead, a male voice seeps through the radio waves. Cryptus. That's Brackett's voice, lost and uncertain. Brackett, is that you? The voice on the other end moans in pain, and after a moment I hear gurgling. Uh-oh. Brackett, what's happening? We're screwed. We're so screwed. This is it for us. He sounds mad. Was he suffering from trench narcosis as well? Brackett, I'm here. Talk to me. It's too late. More gurgling. Gur gurgling, I'm guessing. It's then that I realize he's not choking on his blood. Rather, I can hear the rushing sound of water flowing, of metal bending. Uh-oh. This chamber is imploding. Bracket, you need to get out of there. Bracket laughs and laughs. <laughs> There's nowhere to go. The danger is here with us. Bracket! We're all fucked, Cryptus. Hope it was worth it. Before I could speak, a sharp inhale slips through the radio, and then a boom resonates on the ocean floor. The chamber rattles, and I'm barely able to keep myself steady. Cryptus, what was that? I can't find it in me to answer the system signaling that we were down a chamber and an escape pod. I have to say something. Um. Yeah, we, we should be honest, I think. Sila, that was Bracket. No, you don't mean... Now we really need each other. There's a silence that falls between us. Mine is a reflection of grief, of the gravity of this gra gra gravity, gravity of the situation. Silas, well, Silas feels like nothing at all. I can now check the recently unlocked log. Trench narcosis is a poorly understood affliction commonly experienced by long haul researchers, theorized to be caused by the effects of hydrostatic pressure on internal systems of the human body over extended periods of time. Trench narcosis symptoms can range from mild to fatal and include, but are not limited to, fever, chills, shortness of breath, vertigo and dizziness, nausea and vomiting, muscle aches and joint sensitivity, loss of bone mass, aggressive behavior, confusion and memory loss, seizures and death. I need to get Sila talking again. Sila, please come in. It takes a while, but eventually her radio crackles to life again. What do you want from me, Cryptus? Can you tell me what hurts? Ugh. What kind of question is that? I need to focus on what I know, not what I can't remember. And what I know is that you're in pain. Is it fatal? <laughs> Sila barks a mocking laugh, but the shuddering wheeze on the tail end makes my heart ache. You really don't remember a goddamn thing. I really don't. Sila, I promise you. If I if I did something to upset you, if I hmm. I took my suit off. You what? Sila, with the system down our oxygen reserves. Tickling down fat ticking down fast. I know, doesn't matter. There was a tear in my gear anyway. My helmet's eye sh shield shattered, too. It's useless now, just dead weight dragging me down. Oh, Sila. 
I shake my head, gutted. I'm so... so... Don't say it, Crybdis. You're always sorry for one thing or another. Like that time with the cards, you cleaned me out. What is she talking about? The cards? <laughs> Sat there insisting you don't know shit about poker for days and days. Then the first time I get you to sit down and play with me, you take all my money. My panties, too. <laughs> Excuse me? My clothes, princess. Right off my back. It's hard not to laugh. I do my best, but I'm sure Sila can hear my muffled attempts at keeping quiet. I would never do such a thing. <laughs> you would, and you did, and you kept giggling about it when you thought I wasn't looking. Turns out Miss Goody Two-Shoes got eyes like a hawk and the heart of a snake. I don't know what to say to that. Look, the important thing is I'm not dead yet, so... Aw oh, shit, my pod's spinning. Hang on, I... Vertigo. Repeated spells are a late-stage symptom of a trench narcosis. Uh, Issa, symptom of a lot of things. I'm fucking seeing. Sila? Nothing after that, just more of Sila's labored wheezing, a few incoherent murmurs mixed in with her heavy breaths. I am beside myself with worry for her. We've had our differences, but I never wanted any of this to happen. Bracket's gone, Sila in the throes of trench narcosis. He was right. The danger is here with us. Sila, pre please respond. She puts on such a front most of the time, but there's softness there too. And her panties. I'm imagining things. Pink and frilly certainly doesn't make sense for her. No, that story definitely did not happen. Still, I hear. I just need a minute. Ask your fucking questions. Right. I clear my throat, pushing back the dread again. Tell me about the state of your life, Bod. All systems, one at a time. <laughs> Radio is operational, local frequency only. Security system is locked down. Can't, can't fucking get out, just like you. Escape pod is, escape pod is what, Sila? A quick mo scan of my own escape but capsule tells me that the core structure has taken no damage. Non-operational, presumably because of the main powers out, but if we can just get the core system back online, it should work. Busted, I... It's a no-go, Cryptus. What do you mean? Broken, trashed, wire shanked out of the sockets, window cracked. A thrill of pure dread assaults me. What could have possibly done that? Focus, are you alone in there? <laughs> Another one of her bitter laughs. They make me feel odd inside, like someone thinks missing. Like they're all wrong. No one in here but us chickens! What? The frenetic, shrill cacawing that comes crashing from the line startles me. It's loud and mixed in with a new kind of laughter that I don't like the sound of at all. Listen, I've got a plan. Nothing she won't stop. I have to make her stop. I'll say, I need you. Or snap out of it. Either one, really. I'll do this one, I guess. Sila, please. I need you. That makes the calling die, die down fast. I... Crybdis. I'm here. Thank you. Now, do you remember our failsafe system? The two-key solution built into every submersible. There is a long pause as we both process the seriousness of that option. It wasn't ever supposed to come to that. I know, Silo. Trust me. I know. I need you to tell me if your key can still be turned. A beat of silence follows. There's shuffling that sounds like Sila moving around in her pod. I can almost picture her dragging her sluggish body around. A fresh wave of pounding erupts in my head. I force myself to focus on our new mission. Yeah, I can turn it. Good. I need you to... Can't. Oh. I... Can't. Stay with me, Sila. I... I just need to rest. Don't worry, I won't kick the bucket. Just give me a minute. The line goes dead again. All I can do is hope she's alright. That I won't lose another crew member in the blink of an eye. That I can find something in these logs to help us. Let me save again. Something. Anything. The next file is called Risk Assessment Researcher 86154. That's Sila's ID number. I was writing about her in my private logs. 
she called me practical. I must have used a boring password for this one. So probably Sila, I guess. Uh, Sila missed her weekly target again. I don't know what's causing her to suddenly drop the ball like this. She's normally so good with the drill, but her subsea manifold assessments have been totally off lately. She also broke a critical piece of tech that I had to go into the system to manually restore, and she got so angry with me when I sat down, sat her down for a quick chat about her performance failures. I know, it's tricky being her boss given how things seem to be changing between us. It's awkward. I don't know what to do about it. All I know is that if things keep heading in this direction, the suits at Leviathan X will defund our mission. So Sila has been having problems for a while now. People are known to get stir crazy after too much time spent down here near the ocean floor. But this doesn't sound like that. It sounds worse. Sila, are you awake? Nothing. I can't just sit here and wait for her to answer. I'm the head res researcher of this outfit, and it's high time I start acting like it. The two key solution isn't one to be ta undertaken lightly. The tech back at Leviathan X station might be cutting edge, but our submissile submersibles are as cheap as they come. Corporate will take any chance to cut costs, even if doing so puts us researchers in danger. Half of our tech is already outdated and struggling. A full system reboot not only requires burning what's left of our ship's oxygen as full for the re fuel for the reboot, but there's no guarantee all systems will successfully come back online. I'm going through this kind of fast, but only because I'm I'm really into it. I can feel the suspense, so it kind of makes me want to drive forward. So I'm kind of forgetting about the review part, but I will review it later on. Um, I do just want to say though that the writing's really good. Like, so I'm not I'm not this. It's, it's definitely giving me a sci-fi vibe, and I'm not really a sci-fi expert, but <laughs> um, more of a fantasy romance genre person. But um, from my perspective anyway, the writing is great. I mean, it definitely gives me the feel that this is real and happening and it seems like, sounds like things that you'd hear science people say, you know, I mean, at least from what I know of anyway. So I think it sounds very legit and good writing very descriptive and whatnot so good i like it it's a little on the vague side but i think that's kind of the point i think uh you know giving it that mystery aspect it's, it's it's a little on the vague side but i'm but i'm able to keep up and pretty much follow what's going on i i think anyway <laughs> so it sounds like you know they're uh they're obviously they're having technical difficulties and are uh, suffering uh, from this narcosis, trench narcosis, I think they called it, um, which would explain like from the symptoms on that list, like the main character's memory loss and whatnot. And Sila just having that crazy outburst and laughing, you know, hysterically or whatnot. So yeah. Very intense. I like it. All right, let's keep going. Uh, backup codes. I know I printed them out and stashed them somewhere. Every ship comes equipped with a secondary emergency system that allows pilots to transfer data and power up the escape pods. After all, corporate might be happy to lose medical and general engineering systems, but never their precious data. And if they were, they want to make it damn sure no one else gets access to it. I hope I haven't locked them. There. Finally, I catch a break. Yanking a series of drawers open proves fruitless at first, but eventually I come up with a big with the last drawer. In my hands, I suddenly hold a manila fo folder with uh, white papers inside. Sweet, sweet analog ar 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 archiving. Blech. A physical copy of important documentation that will never let me down. Okay, time to give these a shot. There is a special tiny console reserved just for backup code entry. Walking towards the set of buttons makes me realize just how tired and dizzy I am. The headache hasn't subsided. I've just gotten used to the constant drone at the back of my mind. When I reach the console, I stop to lean there for a moment. Time passes, but eventually I punch in the code. Come on. Fuck. They don't work. Fucking work. 
Oh no, we're not gonna blame Saya. Why can't I do anything right? Calm down, Angel. You're starting to sound like me now. Sila, you're awake. <sighs> Said I wasn't gonna die on you yet. Just need a little nappy nap. <laughs> There's that laughter again. Manic tired. The walk back to my seat feels longer than ever. Sorry, I know I'm freaking you out. It's not your fault. I'm sorry I lost my cool for a minute there. What did I say about you and all your apologies? I wheeze out a small laugh and it's an ugly sound. I can feel the trench narcosis closing in around my neck. I missed this. Missed what? Sharing a laugh over imminent disaster? <clears throat> Sharing a laugh over anything, Cryptus. Things change so fast. I know. Well, that was good. the good news. <clears throat> Are you ready to hear the bad? Oh god, Sila. Like I said, sorry for real this time. Just tell me what's wrong. So... Remember what happened to Bracket? The enormity of Sila's words hit me like a freight train. Oh god. It's okay. It's probably better this way. What we've been doing all the way down here- Neither of us deserves to live anyway. Yeah, what have they been doing? Uh, they've been keeping that kinda... Hidden, but... Don't say that, Sila. Stop. I heard drowning's not too bad. You can close your eyes and... Let it all just wash over you. Sila, please. Your key, we still have time. No, Cryptus. No, we don't. Sila? Sila, are you there? Please. I slump back in my seat when I don't get an answer. With my hands shaking in my suit, I reach for the comfort of my lo logs again. The next file is Cobb's observation report number seven, one bad apple. These look like notes I made about the crew. Possibly about team morale? Funny how people often forget the latter half of the, that phrase. One bad apple spoils the batch. Please find attached to qualitative observations about the overall mental and physical state of researcher 86154 called Sila, in advance of my quarterly report on Cal Caleste 17's mining cycle timetables, artifact acquisition volumes, and experimental lab results. Researcher Sila's baseline assessments have revealed her to be a diligent and efficient laborer who consistently compiles her assigned tasks well before project timeline completion. She is normally a high-valued addition to the team, and what she lacks in decorum and a regard for basic etiquette, she more than makes up for in labor efficiency. My intimate knowledge of researcher Sila's work ethic and mental faculties make me qualified to raise concerns about her recent behavior. Since my last quarterly report, her work has notably suffered in quality, punctuality, and output. She has begun to exhibit signs of agitation and increased aggression, as well as periods of confusion and memory loss. It is my fear that if researcher Sila is not granted surface leave within a reasonable window of time to be examined by Leviathan X medical staff, the last 17's operational effectiveness will suffer greatly. Please uh, advise head researcher 86127, Cryptus of Class 17. I don't remember writing that. I couldn't have written that. I sound so cold. Then again, corporates never cared for anything but results. Maybe I frame my concerns for Sila this way for them to take me seriously. Why did I e ever come down here? The next file is called Accident, Mission Critical. Is this it? What happened to our ship? <clears throat> Sila attacked Bracket. I've never seen her so angry, but it wasn't her fault. She was so confused, and poor Sila, it just wasn't her fault. God fucking damn it, if corporate had just taken my report for surface leave seriously, then Bracket wouldn't be locked in life support where she can, can't get to him. It's the narcosis. It's eating her brain alive. I tricked Sila back into her pod and changed the backup codes to keep any of us from getting out of here. I can hear her crashing around in her pod like a rabid animal. I have to crash the system now. We're sick. We're all sick down here. I can't think straight anymore and everything's gone to hell. Uh oh. It was me. I realize uh, something hollow sound surrounds my chest. My whole body feels as if it's suddenly dropping, careening towards the ocean floor with a velocity that would surely kill me. I changed the codes. I locked us in here. 
My hands begin to shake. My fingers close on nothing but the minimal oxygen left in our vessel. Thyla attacked Brackett, led him to his death. Then, and then I trapped her in her own hell. I've doomed us all. Fuck, I... Fuck! It takes everything in my power not to rip the terminal from the desk and throw it. Raging confusion racked my body, twisting my spine and pulling my muscles. I slam my fist against the metal of the walls, and it dents underneath my knuckles with a sickening crack. <laughs> Judging by your screams of frustration, I think you're finally up to speed. You knew. You knew what I did, but you didn't- Didn't what? Want to take you back to the place where you're a murderer and I'm no better? Call me selfish, but I liked you fawning over me. <laughs> I missed it. It felt precious now, more than ever. I've doomed us. No, we were doomed the moment we came down here. You might have just sped up the process some, but it was always going to go down this way. In the end, we're just tools. And Bracket? Mm -hmm. Bracket? Uh, never mind, it doesn't matter. Never mind, it doesn't matter now. What matters is finding a way out of this hell. And finding out what's been happening to you, Sila. I don't... I'm changing, Cryptus. Something has been shifting inside of me. It's not like trench narcosis. Not like any case I've ever read about. But whatever is happening to me, it stopped me from being afraid. Afraid? Of death. Of what's out there. In fact, the more this whole situation sets in, the more I feel I belong down here. You're starting to feel it too, aren't you? I don't look at the dent in the metal wall and scowl. Something twists in my gut. She's right. I'm going to get the power back on. I poke around the terminal and realize one file has always been accessible. It's part of my personal recordings. I had never bothered to look at as, as it's where my birthday party photos were stored or silly pranks by Bracket. Now it feels like a lifeline to forget the shit we're in. Log, title, video, transmission, researcher, 86154. Sender, Sila. Receiver, Cryptus. Begin transmission. <clears throat> How am I supposed to start this? <sighs> I need a fucking manual. Okay, the first thing to do is establish a baseline, right? Whenever we do our checks, we always refer to our baseline so we can manage expectations. The problem is, I don't have any expectations of you. That's what makes this shit pure, I think. My love for you. I don't know how it happened, and I don't want anything from you. Don't need you to say it back. I just... We've gotten close, and things are confusing, awkward. We share a bed sometimes, and then we get up in the morning and do the work like nothing's happened. <sighs> so I just wanted to put this out there. Just wanted you to know. <laughs> I love you, researcher 8627. And I'll love you with our full names when we get back up to the surface, if you want. In transmission, 213. I pull away, feeling tears well in my eyes. This love, it's been here, saved on my terminal. This log is three months old. Around the time I changed the backup codes. Aw. I shut the power supply in fear of any more damage coming to the crew. I locked us all away. I was desperate for corporate to save Sila. I broke my own rules. Why did I do what what did I do this all for? Staring at the screen, I feel tears well up in my eyes. With shaky fingers, I type in, I love you. And all the backup systems boot online. Is that sweet airflow I feel, Angel? The radio crackles to life clearer than before. I'm going to transfer all remaining systems to the power supply. It should be enough for us to get the escape pods working. <laughs> Forever an optimist. Save again. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. <clears throat> we could escape. I already told you. It's too late for me. I've... I'm not what you remember. 
I know, I want to say, I know. We have to turn our keys at the same time. I hear a sharp groan and splashing. Uh-oh. Sound us off. One. Two. Three. The keys turn, the latch on the escape pod clicks away, and a boom ripples the ocean floor. The second compartment on Colas 17 has imploded. No! Sila, Sila, answer me! But nothing comes through the speaker. I sink to the floor, the alarm kicks up again, a stark reminder that if I don't enter my escape pod soon, I would be joining Sila and Bracket in a watery hell. With tears in my eyes, I begin to edge my way towards the pod until... There's a knock on my chamber door. Sila said her suit was damaged. We're 317 leagues below. The pressure alone would. And then there's another knock. Uh-oh. I have a bad feeling about this. I can't risk dying just to find out what is waiting for me on the other side of that door. If it's Sila, it's not the Sila I know. Traveling on the ocean floor, that can't be human. Without looking back, I scramble towards the escape pod. The pounding on the door gets louder, more aggressive. The airtight hinges begin to dent. Whatever is on the other side is going to kill me. I repeat that like a mantra as I slip into the escape pod. I quickly activate protocol and strap in. The door closes, the air releases, and the pod is removed from the latch connecting it to my chamber. With a sharp hiss, it shoots upward, controlling the pressure as I climb towards the surface. Halfway along, there's a hard thunk, as if something has latched itself onto the vessel. Whatever it is, I know it awaits me on the surface. Sila. Oh. Okay. Cool. I am kind of curious about what happens if you open the door, so let's let's see. All right, so we're just gonna skip. All right, and now we're gonna open the door. If she's out there, if she survives somehow, I can't turn my back on her now. I won't. Sila. I stumble forward, disoriented and desperate, and grab the ocean latch on my chamber door. She loves me, and I her. I never said it back. The next day I spoke to her as if nothing had changed, and she never came to my bed again. I was a coward then, but I won't die for one now. I open the door. A tidal wave of ocean water crashes through and slams me against corrugated metal and beeping consoles. Ugh. My suit ruptures as pain explodes down my spine. I can't tell if I've cracked my skull or just my helmet, but then I see her. Oh, how she glows. Sila, monstrously beautiful, beautifully monstrous, like nothing I've seen before. She dives at me just as the water eclipses my head and pulls me under. Sila. Something within me snaps, the gruesome sound of bones breaking. Freezing cold water batters my twisted body from all directions. Se seconds until now, until my helmet floods, a dozen icy tongues lapping at my chin and greeting. Don't be scared. Her words caress my brain as her many arms envelop me. I... I gasp for air and gargle water instead, but I have to tell her she deserves to know. I love you too, Sila. She smiles back at me with her new alien mouth adoring, terrifying. I smile too, finally at peace with it all. Then there's only water in the last breath I hold in my lungs, but I don't hold it for very long. Death, it turns out, is more of a change than a finality. Sila has changed and I am changing too. It begins with the removal of my helmet. Next, my suit and every other earthly material that ties me to the sad little lives we once lived down here. I float naked and trusting with Sila surrounding me, her many arms, my cradle until I bloom. Mm -hmm. Interesting. 
Zyla peels back her monstrous layers from my transformed body, and there I am, reve revealed in mine. She looks at me, and I look at her. We share secrets the surface world will, ne will never know. We are together now in an infinitely beautiful darkness, no longer scared, no longer alone. We are monsters born anew. She set aglow in a light of our own making. Aww. That was nice. That was dark, but, but good. I really like that. Uh, I like the art. I like the, the characters were interesting. Um, I really like the writing. The writing was spot on, I think. Um, like I said, it really gave, gave me the feeling of um, that this was real, that these were actual, you know, uh, researchers or whatever. I'm still not really sure, or, or does it say they were mining? I don't know. I'm still not really sure what they were doing, so it was a little on the vague side in terms of the mystery aspect. But overall, I think it was really well done. It is kind of hard to create a good sense of mystery, I think, sometimes. But I think this did a, a good a good job of uh, explaining without with with keeping that that vague mystery sense. So en enough for me to follow along and get a, at least a, some idea of what's going on. It's a it was a good idea for the for the um, main character to have that memory loss probably once again as some sort of seasickness, maybe from a lack of oxygen or something. Um, because then it, it, uh, yeah, it like let us like retrace our steps and remember what, what we went through and whatnot. And that was a good way to reveal the mystery, you know, without, uh, withholding information as we learned step by step and retrace the main character steps of what going, was going on. I think that was a really good, idea to um uh, incorporate the mystery without making it obvious that that they were keeping things from us anyway it felt more natural like a natural progression into the into the secrets and 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 the mystery solving solving the mystery of what happened to our ship and and what happened to Sila and why she was undergoing this transformation and the whole uh cryptic log thing. The first one, I, I had no idea. I had to look it up, but the others were, I think, a, a little more obvious, or maybe it was just that I knew what I was looking for. So, so yeah. Um, uh, it depends on how difficult you want it to be, but what I would suggest is maybe including, like, a little hint, like, keep an eye out for highlighted words or something. Uh... I mean, I don't know. That might also break the immersion. So I, I don't know. Maybe it's okay, but maybe I'm just a little not observational enough. But, <laughs> um, but yeah. Once I knew what to look for to look for those highlighted words, then I had no problem figuring out those logs. So, um, in terms of critical cr constructive criticism, let me think. I don't really have much. I don't think. Maybe just a little more clarity on what's going on. Because they were like hinting at that they were doing something wrong. But I don't understand what they were doing wrong exactly. I definitely got the sense that the company they work for is not a very good company. They obviously treat their um, workers like shit and they really don't care about them at all. <laughs> um, if, if they're giving them the, this cheap equipment that barely works and whatnot. So I would have liked a little, maybe just a little more information, a little more clarity on, on, in terms of background. I guess that's really my only complaint, really. Um, I think the GUI looks great. The art looks great. Characters are great. I think I already said, did I already say all that? But yeah, generally speaking, I thought it was, it was really nicely structured and had a good flow to it. So all in all, really good uh, visual novel. I probably, considering it's a jam game, I'm going to give it 5 out of 5 because my, my complaint was more of a minor one because I do think that there was a good amount of information. I just wanted a, just a little bit more <laughs> because I am still a little confused about what was going on and why they were there and all that. felt like they were purposefully trying to avoid the topic of why they were there. 
I guess maybe because they already know, but we don't know. I don't know. Or maybe it, maybe it was there and I just missed it. In that case, just ignore me because, <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes if it's just a little detail mentioned, I will pass it over and not, not without realizing if it's something mentioned at the beginning, it's something I might overlook. But um, anyway, so that's it. Thanks for watching and have a great day. I'll be playing some more of these uh, Nana Reno 2024 games soon. So see you. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.